um, my colleagues in the American press do better with this story? Well, one of the, the, the big problems is, and, and you know, here goes the grenade, uh, Israel. The second you mention the word Israel, uh, the nation Israel, the concept Israel, uh, many in the American press become very defensive. Uh, we're not allowed to be highly critical of the state of Israel. Uh, and when you, and the other thing we're not allowed to do is discuss the notion that Israel and the notion of Israeli interests may in fact be dictating what America is doing. That what we're doing in the Middle East may not be to the benefit of America's national security, but to Israel's national security. But see, we don't want to talk about that because one of the great success stories out there is the pro-Israeli lobby that has successfully enabled uh, themselves to blend the two together so that when we speak of Israeli interests, they say, no, we're speaking of American interests. Um, it's, it's interesting that AIPAC and other um, elements of the Israeli lobby don't have to register as agents of a foreign government. It would be nice if they did because then we'd know when they're advocating on behalf of Israel or they're advocating on behalf of the United States of America. Uh, I would challenge the New York Times to sit down and do a critical story on Israel, on the role of Israel's influence, the role that Israel plays in influencing American foreign policy. There's nothing wrong with Israel trying to influence American foreign policy. We make that clear. The British seek to influence our foreign policy. The French seek to influence our foreign policy. The Saudis seek to influence our foreign policy. The difference is when they do this and they bring American citizens into play, these Americans, once they take the money of a foreign government and they advocate on behalf of that foreign government, they register themselves as an agent of that government so we know where they're coming from. That's all I ask the Israelis to do. Let us know where you're coming from, because stop confusing the American public that Israel's interests are necessarily America's interests. I have to tell you right now, Israel has a viable, valid concern about Hezbollah in southern Lebanon. If I were an Israeli, I'd be extremely concerned about Hezbollah, and I would want to do everything possible to nullify that organization. As an American, I will tell you, Hezbollah does not threaten the national security of the United States of America one iota. So we should not be talking about using American military forces to deal with the Hezbollah issue. That is an Israeli problem, and yet you'll see the New York Times, the Washington Post, and other media outlets confusing the issue. They want us to believe that Hezbollah is an American problem. It isn't, ladies and gentlemen. Hezbollah was created three years after Israel invaded Lebanon, not three years after the United States invaded Lebanon, and Hezbollah's sole purpose was to liberate southern Lebanon from Israeli occupation. I'm not here to condone or sing high praises and virtue for Hezbollah, but I'm here to tell you right now, Hezbollah is not a terrorist organization that threatens the security of the United States of America. Former U.N. Weapons Inspector Scott Ritter in conversation with Pulitzer Prize winning journalist Seymour Hirsch. We'll be back with them. Well, again, I, I think it comes down to, you know, we, we keep, the Bush administration likes, likes to talk a lot about the nexus, the nexus between weapons of mass destruction and terrorism. Um, I'll talk about the nexus between the neoconservatives in Washington, D.C. and the right wing of the Likud party in Israel. Uh, these these elements, these political elements, have been working hand in glove for, for many, many years. And now that the neoconservatives in Washington, D.C. have seized power, or have gained power, attained power, um, <laughs> uh, that now that they're in power, the, um, the, the right wing in Israel has to play this game. Has to, they have to deal with the, the cards that they've been dealt. And, um, and so they're, you know, they're not going to stand up to the United States. You're not going to sit there and try and encourage the United States to make a move on Iran using fact-based information. You've got to understand there's certain buttons you need to push in Washington, D.C. To, to get American politicians to move in a certain direction. And um, you've know, you got to keep it simple. And the simplest thing is to say that there is a nuclear weapons program in Iran. And then you've got to push some more buttons because you don't want to treat that in isolation. You want to complicate it further. That nuclear weapons program is in the hands of a nation that is a state sponsor of terror, Iran. And the terrorist organizations that they sponsor are inclusive of Hezbollah, 
Hamas, the Palestinian Liberation Organization, Fatah Wing. This is all part of the same problem, you see. And in doing so, Israel now complicates America's overall policy posture vis-a-vis -vis the Middle East because now it becomes very difficult to treat the Palestinian situation in isolation. It becomes very difficult to treat the Hezbollah situation in isolation or to treat Iran in isolation. Israel has lumped it all together because they know how to play the American political game, I think, better than we know how to play the American political game. So this is about domestic politics. Trump.